Dr. Carol Marcus is really cool, at least in the Wrath of Khan. In 1982, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan hit theaters. It pulled Star Trek from the shallow grave that the motion picture had begun digging for the franchise, and went on to become one of, if not the most popular, Star Trek film. The basic plot of the film is that Khan Noonien Singh, a quote-unquote perfect man from Earth's eugenics wars, is back, seeking revenge on Kirk about 15 years after the episode Space Seed. The pair duke it out through space, Khan fighting for vengeance and Kirk fighting for the survival of his crew, and both trying to get a hold of the super-powerful Genesis device. It's got it all. Revenge, a TV character throwback, really good banter, Kirk having a midlife crisis, an excellent score, really good pacing and tension, an amazing death scene, fabulous themes and through lines, and of course, Dr. Carol Marcus. In the last video, I talked about Dr. Karen Blair's formula for women in Star Trek the original series. They are all either sex objects, accessories to more important men, or they disappear at the end of the episode, never to be seen again. Many are all of the above. And in many ways, Dr. Carol Marcus follows these trends. She is a former fling of Kirk, imbuing her appearance in the film with the undertones of a sexual relationship, especially considering that a kid came out of it. This also ties her to two plot-relevant men, both Kirk and David. And after this movie, she doesn't appear again, scrapped from the narrative. So, case closed. Another TOS woman screwed over by the narrative that I just forgot to mention last time. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. No, no, wait, hang on. To say that Carol Marcus is exactly the same as all of the one-off Trek women before her, a sex object whose only real claim to plot relevance is her association with men, is to do her a disservice. Sure, she doesn't appear in any of the films after this one, which is a damn shame, but that's the only criteria of Blair's that she fits cleanly. See, Carol Marcus is not a sex object, not in the way other Trek women have been. She is not primarily a romantic interest or a sexual escapade. She's a mother, and perhaps more importantly, a scientist. There is little to nothing romantic, God forbid sexual, about her and Kirk's dynamic in the film. They're close, they're friends, they care about each other. They even express some complex feelings about how things turned out between them. But that part of their lives is very much behind them. After all, as Dr. Marcus puts it succinctly, Were we together? Were we going to be? Whether or not she's a MILF is up for debate, but really, Dr. Carol Marcus's import to the Wrath of Khan has nothing to do with attractiveness or availability. In fact, if we disregard for a moment the emotional throughline of Kirk's midlife crisis and focus just on the action of the film, i.e. Kirk and Khan are fighting, then Dr. Carol Marcus's relevance has nothing to do with her relationship to Kirk. It all has to do with Project Genesis and the Genesis device, Dr. Marcus's major scientific advancement. The Genesis device is a sort of torpedo, early in development, that can create life from lifelessness, turning dead planets or moons into agricultural resources or perhaps even settlements. But such power comes at a price. If it's detonated on a planet with any kind of life, it will destroy said life in favor of the new matrix. The device holds both life and death in its metal casing. Nothing thought-provoking or thematic or you know, existential about that one. The vengeful Khan learns of the Genesis device's power and attempts to steal it, claiming Admiral Kirk ordered the action. Though this sets in motion a reconnection between Kirk and Marcus, Khan knows absolutely nothing of their history or connection. In fact, it's not clear if he ever knows about this. It doesn't matter to him. All that matters to Khan is that he get the device's power and the attention of Admiral Kirk. 
It is Dr. Marcus's work, not her relationship with Kirk, that makes her relevant to the action, even if that relationship is important to the film as a whole. All things considered, Dr. Carol Marcus is the first real upgrade in the archetypal Star Trek woman. The tension between narrative object and compelling agent is broken, or at least fraying badly under the weight of Dr. Marcus's agency and scientific accomplishment. She not only has the intelligence and competence that the best Star Trek women before her had, but she is also not beholden to any men, nor does she become beholden to them, unlike comparable women before her. Instead of the love interest and glorified prop that the original series leaned on so heavily, she is a single mother without an ounce of true regret or victimhood in her character. Being a mother is certainly a traditional role for women, and Dr. Marcus is more of an improvement on prior trends than a clean break from them. But Dr. Marcus is not a mother in an exclusively supportive role like, say, Amanda. She is in an independent role of authority and invokes power, the likes of which is rarely seen in mortals. Though Dr. Carol Marcus is a secondary character, she is no prop. She is a god. It's not as though her scientific project is subtly named. She holds the power of rebirth in her responsible hands, and with it, she revives the two characters most central to Star Trek. Dr. Marcus is the catalyst for both Kirk and Spock's resurrections, though her work on Genesis seems to get most of the credit. The resurrection of Spock is most literal, of course. After his death at the end of The Wrath of Khan, he is brought back to life in The Search for Spock, reborn through the unstable matrix of the Genesis planet on which he was laid to rest. The Genesis planet was created by Khan's detonation of the Genesis device, and so it is Dr. Marcus's early prototype that brings him back. Her work is literally what revives the most beloved character in the original Star Trek lore. I know we all have our favorites in the original series, but Spock is recorded as having the biggest fan clubs, don't at me. Within the runtime of The Wrath of Khan, she is also instrumental in the emotional resurrection of James T. Kirk. Around the midpoint of the film, Kirk and Marcus sit together, taking a moment to reconcile their pasts and talk face to face. Kirk confesses to her that he feels old as he faces the passage of time, not to mention Khan and the son he's never known. He's looking back at a career, a life, a potential that may be lost behind him now and is struggling with regrets. In the face of this admission, Carol offers hope. Though she has felt conflicted in some ways, she does not truly regret the ways their lives have diverged. From this place of fulfillment that she has reached through her work and life choices, she gives him an option no one has yet offered. Let me show you something that will make you feel young as when the world was new. She shows him the results of Genesis testing, a garden of Eden buried deep in a dead moon that shows the impossible becoming possible. But she also shows him honesty, and in this newly revived, miraculous place, Kirk talks with the others about an idea he had begun to forget. He does not believe in a no-win scenario. He should not give up so easily. From this point in the film, and going forward in the sequels, Kirk becomes more focused on the present and making the best of the situation he is given. Growing old is not a no-win scenario. Dr. Marcus also stands beside Kirk in the final moments of the film, joining Dr. McCoy to fill out a frame that would otherwise have empty space where Spock should be. Her emotional anchor is really important to the film, and though it is arguably a feminine role for her, she is still more central to the narrative and less reliant on men than other women in the original series. In The Wrath of Khan, Dr. Carol Marcus points towards a shining future for women in Star Trek a future of increased agency and relevance outside of sexual or romantic potential. She may not be perfect, but she's a marked improvement. And we all know how progress moves in a straight line. In 2013, another movie came out, Star Trek Into Darkness the second in the series of Star Trek reboots helmed by J.J. Abrams. It was bad, in my personal opinion. Into Darkness reuses a lot of elements of Wrath of Khan. 
including, most notably, a blatantly whitewashed Khan Noonien Singh and Carol Marcus. Actually, that's kind of it. All the two movies share, really, is those characters, plus somebody dying to save the Enterprise at the end, and a character screaming, Frankly, I could go on for way too long about all of the things I think are wrong with this movie and all of the mistakes I think it made, but for the purposes of this video, there is one particularly glaring concern. What the fuck is up with Carol Marcus? So, remember from minutes ago how Dr. Carol Marcus broke the mold having more agency than previous women in Star Trek and also arguably having godlike powers? Yeah, forget all that. Into Darkness presents Marcus as a sexy thing to be flirted with who is only tenuously relevant to the plot, and that's just because her daddy is evil. She also isn't seen again in the next movie, but who can blame them when this version is so thin? Also, on a far more superficial level, she has a British accent for some reason? Her father is not British. The original Dr. Marcus isn't British. Alice Eve can totally do a good American accent. Why is she British? Okay. Deep breaths. Like everything that Into Darkness tries and generally fails to copy from the original Wrath of Khan, this Carol Marcus is a flimsy replica of the original, stripped of all defining characteristics in favor of broad appeal. Just as Khan is whitewashed to accommodate superstar casting and maybe try and pull a fast one on the audience, sex appeal was prioritized for this Carol Marcus. Remember Kirk and Marcus's heart-to-heart -heart in Wrath of Khan? That's actually the only scene the two characters spend alone together, as well as the midpoint of Kirk's emotional arc. It's a really valuable breather after some intense action and the notorious Khan scene. And it's also a turning point that offers the characters and the audience new resolve in the face of repeated defeat. Kirk and Marcus also share a single scene in Into Darkness. And, like much of the film, if I may say so, it's a hell of a downgrade. Here, Kirk is speedwalking through the Enterprise with Marcus, because the camera can never be still, talking to her about her father's plans and trying to find out what she knows, essentially their trading exposition. There is no weight in Kirk and Marcus's exchange here. How can there be? They practically just met. But it is a memorable scene in the film. They put it in every trailer, even. And for one very simple reason. Carol Marcus undresses. As they banter and exchange exposition about mysterious weapons, Carol Marcus asks Kirk to turn around for unspecified reasons. He doesn't really listen, and turns to find her in her underwear, which she casually rebukes him for. But the camera is even less respectful than the arguably unwarned Kirk. The viewer is given a complete view of Marcus's barely clad form, hoping to titillate the audience and get butts in seats, using this woman as a sex object, plain and simple. She has all the sex appeal and objecthood of Vina without any of the potential for commentary. It's hard to do a compelling feminist reading on this Carol Marcus as a character because she really isn't one. She is a flashy accessory and a convenience for a convoluted story about men. She has no real bearing on the plot, and everything she does for the story could be done just as well by a computer, maybe even a zip drive. Not to mention by Montgomery Scott, who was left behind for the benefit of a variety of plot contrivances. There is no trace of the original Dr. Carol Marcus in this character, short of them both being blonde women and sharing a name. Though this new Carol Marcus is a science officer, she's a weapons specialist. This is not at all what's implied to be Dr. Marcus's field in The Wrath of Khan. Instead, she appears to be much more of a biologist. Though the Genesis device has the potential to be weaponized, that is not remotely its intended use. The first words we hear out of Dr. Marcus's mouth are insistences that the Genesis Project not harm a single pre-existing life form, which is a far cry from the intimate study of weapons technology. Dr. Carol Marcus began as an independent scientist with life-giving skills and a valuable level head. 
Into Darkness traded this for a sex object who studies deadly weapons so she can be just plot relevant enough to include in the trailer. But let's be real, would plot relevance keep them from including a half-naked woman in the advertising? Stacked up to the original Dr. Marcus, this carol is a massive disappointment and an unnerving indicator of the lack of respect for the source material, not to mention women, behind the scenes. The portrayal of women in the original series is complex. There are both promising and disheartening elements throughout the series. The movies, with the benefit of a decade's hindsight, do start to improve on these earlier representations. I haven't even talked about Lieutenant Savick or Jillian from the Cetacean Institute, both of whom are at least as skilled and independent as Dr. Marcus, and similarly move away from objectification and reliance on men. There are a lot of compelling women in Star Trek, from those torn between object and agent, to those that manage to break out of the aggressively objectified past. But, lest we assume progress is linear, 2013's Carol Marcus is here to remind us that all of the patriarchal powers of the camera still very much exist. Only through continued community vigilance and improvements behind the camera can we really keep moving forward and keep taking female characters where no writer has gone before. Hi! If you liked this video or liked this video series, uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to talk more about Star Trek women. Anyone in particular? Any series in particular? Hit me up. Or just anything about Star Trek. Or hell, just let me know something you like about Star Trek. Even if you don't have a comment or a suggestion, I'd really appreciate if you could like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. It all helps. Thanks so much. Have a good day.